Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder of muscles movement, which is characterized by tremors, muscular rigidity, bradykinesia, that means slowness in initiating and carrying out voluntary movements, and postural and gait abnormalities, such as rigidity and trembling of the head and extremities, forward tilt of the trunk, shuffling gait with short steps, and reduced arm swing, and also speech disorders, and small handwriting as it may become hard to write. Parkinson's disease is correlated with destruction of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra, with a consequent reduction of dopamine actions in the corpus striatum, which are parts of the basal ganglia system, that are involved in motor control. In the nigrostriatal pathway, there is a balance between dopamine, acting as an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and acetylcholine acting as an excitatory neurotransmitter. The symptoms appear when the degeneration in the dopaminergic neurons occurs while cholinergic neurons are still intact, leading to a relatively excess amount of acetylcholine. And we know that the basal ganglia controls the motor activity. So any disturbance in dopamine, acetylcholine balance would cause movement disorders. So what exactly causes this degeneration? The cause of the degeneration is usually unknown, but it may be triggered by exposure to toxins, such as carbon monoxide, herbicides and pesticides, or MPTP. And there are also some risk factors, such as age. People usually develop the disease around age 60 or older. Genetics Having a close relative with Parkinson's disease, increases the chances that someone develops the disease. And also sex is a risk factor. Men are more likely to develop Parkinson's disease than women. And it may be also drug-induced, so it may occur by using the drugs, that affect the balance of dopamine and acetylcholine, as we mentioned earlier, such as with antipsychotics. So we can conclude the mechanisms of drugs that can be used to manage Parkinson's disease. There are two main mechanisms, either increasing dopamine, or decreasing acetylcholine. So we can replace dopamine, using levodopa, or mimic dopamine, using dopamine agonists. Decrease the metabolism of dopamine, so increasing its duration, using MALB inhibitors, or using COMT inhibitors. Release more dopamine, and decrease its uptake from nerve terminals, using amantadine. Blocking acetylcholine action, by blocking muscarinic receptors, and keep the balance with dopamine. And that's what we'll discuss in details in the upcoming lectures. So subscribe, click on the bell icon and keep following us.